this is the homie hangout obviously where we help others move in excellence and i'm really looking forward to this today and so i'll go ahead and introduce her and we'll get into this conversation so her name is akale brown she is taos pueblo and kanaka meoli hawaiian native hopefully i mentioned that or hopefully i said that right okay good and um and yeah, so let's uh, let's go. You sort of touched on this when you said that that the more younger generations of of natives are being a lot more uh, open and 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 a lot more kind of interested in and drawn towards and and comfortable representing their their cultural identity, right? Mm-hmm. Um, have you also noticed? a a co-opting of some of that like a a, how can i put it you know sometimes then and i i think this particularly happens with with native culture in some ways this uh yeah there's this co-opting this tokenizing of uh of a culture by others who who don't identify with it but it becomes a fashionable thing right it becomes cool and it's yes that's that's a big trend that's happening right now is the you know coming so what we used to call it in college like when i was going to school and like anybody can have it you don't have to be in college to have this happen to you let's say you read a book and you find out all the truth that's been like like everything you learned was a lie right that's called the great awakening but a lot for a lot of people, it happens to them when they're in college because they'll take like African American history for the first time, or they'll take Native American studies for the first time, and they find out like these certain tribes were completely wiped out. Um, you know, the massacres, the mass rapes, um, the diseases that were given to people, right. what they did to babies. Once people hear that stuff, it's so graphic, you know and everything and for some natives for a lot of natives they didn't learn that at school Mm, right and so when when it when they hear the history you know it can be very like traumatic for people right sure and so what's happening now because of social media is people are having their great awakening through memes Mm. and they're not really reading and they're not studying they're not learning the history and people are learning like little snippets of history just through memes. And um, there's people that are like, well, I know I'm indigenous, right? right? And so a big movement is reconnecting natives. And I'm all for it. I'm all for reconnecting with your tribe. It's extremely important, especially if people are saying they call themselves detribalized natives, you know, like you live far away from where your tribe is, right? So people are starting to call themselves that. I've never really heard that before. Yeah. But people are like calling themselves that now. So important part of reconnecting, and this goes for all natives, especially us urban Indians that didn't grow up on the reservation. Mm-hmm. You have to go back and connect and learn. That's it. Right. You go back and you connect. And like for a lot of my friends that are like Mayan or Aztec, my friends I went to school with, they've climbed those pyramids. Right. They've gone down, you know, to where their ancestors were. They've learned how to cook those mm-hmm. meals. They've learned how to gather those plants. And it's it's a whole process and it takes years. It's definitely not something you can just do or claim overnight, you know. Right. Well, you can claim it, but you know, it's, it's, you know, I'm saying like, yeah. you don't want to be a practitioner of it if you don't know. Right. You're not an expert after you read a book or you pass a semester, right? It's, right. It takes, uh, it's a journey. It can yeah. take a lifetime to learn all the things. Even you, you talk to natives, grew up on the res, knew everything. They're 80 years old. They'll say, I don't even know everything yet. Right. Cause it's a, all it is, is a journey. And um, what's happening because of social media is people are like, I want the status now. I mm. want the respect. I want, you know, and it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a new age. Right. Yeah. It's, it's funny you mentioned the elders, right? Because it, it seems oftentimes it's those that know the most and, and have experienced the most that tend to be the most humble and, 
and quick to recognize how little in the grand scheme of things they really do know, right? Um, no, it's a, it's a journey. It's like there's no finish, you yeah. know, and no one's greater than the other just because, mm. you know, I might have been a power dancer for the past 15 years of my life doesn't mean my my journey of like connecting and and you know being native is any greater than yours gotcha. because our journeys are different paths you know and honestly i think the southern tribes are i mean i can't wait to go to mexico because mm. those tribes built pyramids yeah like we don't even have those up here Mm. Those tribes down there had astrologists, yeah. they had surgeons, they had all different kinds of pr practitioners of medicine. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they invented surgical procedures that like way back when they had written textbooks, they had books mm -hmm. and the Spanish burned everything. Yeah. I mean, these were advanced civilizations, more advanced than the dang Egyptians. Yeah. And and they don't, and the, the people, the Southern tribes, the people who are, you know, Aztec, and there's over a thousand tribes in Mexico. So I don't know them all, but there's mm -hmm. so many and it's so rich and vast in culture. It's, it's something to be proud of. Mm. And so I, I mean, for me growing up as a Northern native, like, I would, if I was Southern native, I'd really want to reconnect because mm. it's, they actually have a lot of their culture left. Whereas up here, we've been assimilated and dominated in the U S for a very long time. We've been brainwashed to be white. Whereas a lot of those cultures down there, they speak their language. They still gather their food. They, they don't even have running water in, in some right. pueblos. And it's a beautiful thing. Like you go down there and you learn humility, you learn respect. And, and that's what I learned when I went back to my tribe hmm. is a lot of humility and, and, and just to be respectful. Right. How do you, uh, no, and, and, and I appreciate that. How do we help here in, in this country? You have a lot of different marginalized pockets that experience the same kind of marginalization, right? Um, maybe in, in slightly different ways, but how, um, how do we do better at building solidarity across ethnic lines as opposed to viewing one group's success as, as competitive, right? There's so much in common and yet it's so difficult to get a room full of, full of marginalized people that come from different ethnic or cultural, or even geographic backgrounds to get on the same page, right. you know? Right. I feel like when, you know, George Floyd happened, everybody, that's when everyone really came together. It didn't matter your race, your mm -hmm. creed, how much money you made, it didn't matter. You know, everyone was in the streets. Everyone was angry because we all got to see it, you know, right. at home. And, that was one time I saw like those, those lines kind of disappear. Mm -hmm. But as time went on, you know, things kind of got back to this move, this group and this group and this group. Right. And it's really hard to say. It's really hard to say what would be the solution to that. My only solution, I mean, the only two solutions I can think of is trying to understand one another, listening, like don't show up with an agenda, show up with an open mind and, and learn how you can be of assistance. Hmm. I always say I'm, I, I exist for this, you know, to be in the service of my community. Right. That's why I exist in this world hmm. is to be of assistance and to be of service. I'm not here to take. Right. And a lot of people, that's not how they live their life. But that's like the Indian way is yeah. to live your life like that, is to, to give more than you take and to help. And if everyone could just like do that and be a little bit nicer to one another, kind of mm. help each other and listen, like we, <laughs> we'd be so much further ahead than yeah. we are right now. I think part of the lesson here, maybe for, for others is all that bickering all that pointing fingers keeps the masses 
out of the work. I got thoughts and opinions, but I'm not wading through that swamp, you know, yeah. um, where where anything I say or do is going to be under a microscope. So the, the opportunity for the power of numbers and the power of community gets gets stripped away by those who purport to be wanting to build community and consensus and power, right? It's like mm -hmm. a self-defeating effort. Speaking of family, um, I, I don't know if, if you want to kind of highlight some of the some of the work and just the businesses that uh, that you're involved in or, or that you promote um there's definitely um an organization i want to to prop up okay. is um the california native vote they're actually an organization that's trying to get california native history passed through the legislature so that the history can be taught in schools in california so they're doing all the hard work behind that they also have a youth committee that is um, coming together to give suggestions to the district about what they think should be in the curriculum and they're meeting monthly okay um and that's the california native vote they're on uh, instagram and facebook okay and so that's one organization. And then my family, basically, I'm a seamstress. I make native regalia, so powwow outfits or like traditional outfits that native ladies wear. And I do a lot of ribbon skirts and stuff like that. Um, I'm looking to go into like ready-made clothing eventually. And I would like to like start with like street apparel but we'll see. Who knows? Okay. <laughs> and that business is called Corn Maiden Designs, and that one's on Instagram. And then my family's other business, well, it's my husband and my daughter's business. It's not mine. It's theirs. But um, last year, my daughter had the idea to make soap to mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and raise some extra money for her gymnastics lessons because I couldn't afford to pay it because I was out of the job at the time right. and so uh she started making soap and i started selling it on instagram and it took off and i was like wow you know <laughs> we're this is pretty good you know, yeah. you know it's better than what what i'm making you know and um so we started working on that and we turned it into a business we made an instagram page it's called lakota body care and over time my partner um, it, I, I couldn't continue to do it. And then the can I started my job and then Candace Reed happened. So my partner decided I'm going to quit my job and I'll just do this business full time. Okay. And so he makes soap and he does the bath salts and the, the herbal teas and all that stuff. And, um, it's called Lakota body care and it's the first native American soap company in Colorado. Okay. So okay. that's what we do. We, we, I've worked, I've worked for so many people and I, I've had some amazing bosses, mm -hmm. but I've also had a jerk boss that like timed how long I went to the bathroom. And after that, yeah. I said, you know what? I'm never working for anybody again. Yeah. And that's, when, <laughs> that's when I started just selling my stuff and it, it worked out. So good. I know the, Corn Maiden designs the shop itself is through Etsy, right? And then Lakota Body Care has its own website. Uh huh. You could look at my Instagram if they're already tagged. And then I'll post the link to the Etsy shop and, and to the Lakota Body Care shop in the comments because I know some of you guys aren't on. Aren't, aren't. And please support, you know, for, for a range of reasons. Um, so I know you mentioned, you know, having college degrees um, and... Uh, so can you tell a little bit about the name Decolonial Scholar? Yes. Um, so I was really lucky enough to meet some of the original Native American scholars from like the 60s and the 70s before they passed away. Uh. And they are the original Decolonial Scholars. That's what I've always called them. I mean, I don't know. The other people used to call them the giants of Native American history because they were a group of friends. They all knew each other. And um, after Alcatraz, 
the mm -hmm. American Indian movement took over Alcatraz, mm -hmm. um, they were able to make an agreement with the state of California to get land to build the first tribal college in um, California. And it was in Dixon, California, which mm -hmm. is like 30, 30 minutes inland of San Francisco. Yeah. And um, the school was 60% Native American and 40% Southern tribes. Hmm. So it was all the tribes from down South and they were sharing like their, their traditions with the tribes up North. Like they would do all their ceremonies together. They had a basketball team, like they lived together in the dorms. And it was these professors that fought and argued to have this tribal nation school. The school doesn't exist anymore. It shut down in 2005, um, but it was named DQU, hmm. and that's a pretty famous school. But I chose that name because I was applying for my PhD, and at the time, and at the time, you know, um, I got in and I changed the name to that because mm -hmm. I thought I was going to go get my PhD. Gotcha. <laughs> and also in reference to those professors, which were Jack Forbes, he wrote, so he wrote over 30 books, 30 history books, but one of his most famous is Columbus and other cannibals. <laughs> okay. I like the title. Right. And then another professor I met, uh, was Lehman Brightman. He was the, um, he was the president of United Native American Indians Incorporated, which started in the 1970s. They, they're the ones that took over Mount Rushmore in the 70s. And okay. he was like hardcore, like the most hardcore activist. Like he was loud, he was tall, and he cussed a lot. <laughs> Even as like in his 70s, yeah. he was still the same. And I got to meet him and be around him, but he's a real famous professor too. And, and they both passed away since. Mm -hmm. But just hearing their stories and how hard they had to fight just to be heard back then, you know, yeah, that's why I chose the name. I've heard, but I didn't know the the, the context. But um, like I, you know, spent a little bit at, at UC Berkeley, and and there was a lot of conversation amongst the formerly incarcerated community, right, underground scholars and stuff, uh, about decolonizing different aspects of, of education. Right. Uh, and so, so yeah, when I caught that name, that was the only other place I'd really heard it. Well, cause carceral native. systems, you know, native Americans were the first people to be incarcerated here yeah. besides, you know, slaves. I mean, we were, in, I think we were incarcerated first. Sure. So, you know, Indian reservations were internment camps. They were not like somewhere where we could live. We could not leave. We could be shot on sight. And that's the thing that people don't realize. Like we are America's, you know, first prisoners. And, and so, yeah, we definitely, yeah, hmm. makes sense. That's something I'd like to research more. Um, I, what you're saying makes sense, uh, of course, uh, but I'd like to, yeah. I'm about to look into that a little bit more. That's uh, that's interesting. Yeah, Hitler. He uh, he um, Hitler. He designed all his um, concentration camps by copying the United States and how they did it and how they rounded people up. And then I got one final question that I try to ask everybody. Oh, I I don't know if I I don't think I have any final words um, words of wisdom. <laughs> um, if you're in school right now, take a Native American Studies class. It will change your life for sure. Mm -hmm. um, if you're looking for a good book to read on Native history, um, a good book to read would be um, um, an Indigenous History of the United States. That's yeah. a really good book. Um, and other than that, you know, be nice to each other. <laughs> yeah. And, and no, thank you. Um, so actually two, two things, one, and, and we had kind of talked about this offline, but, uh, for, for the benefit of the viewers as well, can you help in breaking down the language in, in terms of, uh, 
I mean, I think most people have recognized that that Indian is is not a very accurate term uh, or 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 very flattering. Uh, but you hear native, you hear First Nation, you hear indigenous, right? Um, so I'm, I'm not asking you to speak for everybody, but from your perspective, uh, where do you come down on on the language? So um, if you know somebody's tribal like background, you should always like say that specifically. Hmm. If you don't know, like, and you're, there's a group of native people, you would call them Native Americans. If there's a group of people and there's like some people from South America in there, some people from Cat, like First Nations from Canada, or some like Polynesians in there, you would call them Indigenous people. Okay. Right. And then if people, if the natives are come from Canada, those ones are called first nations. And then the ones here are native Americans. And then the ones South of the border are our Southern, our Southern um, natives. Gotcha. And so um, indigenous is just an embodiment of all of us. Like if you were to, you know, point at a group of indigenous people, instead of naming off their different backgrounds. Gotcha. But, but the preference but Indian it, thing, the mm-hmm. Indian thing. So that that's going to be a doozy because even the federal government doesn't want to change Indian. Mm-hmm. They want to keep it like that. Gotcha. Uh, so I'm, I'm, so we're just going to have to deal with it. And we don't like to be called that. We might call each other that, but we mm-hmm. don't like when other people call us that. <laughs> no, that's, that's fair. And, and yeah, that, <laughs> that reality exists in a lot of communities. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so thank and, you. And also American Indians, like, you know, like in Indians from India, right? they have kids here <laughs> and their kids who are born here are American Indians. <laughs> right. And so they call themselves that. And so they're all like, you know, like when I want to, you know, if right. you hashtag American Indian, you're going to show up in Bollywood, you know, right. because <laughs> so, you know, yeah, it's, it's something a- to be conscious of. <laughs> right. And just, and I'm, we still don't have a say because right. the federal government doesn't want to change it. Yeah, they, man, the the residuals of colonialism just keep popping up and spreading further and further. Uh, so yeah, one of the subscribers, Cecil, which he's he's a big supporter of the channel, he's in here all the time. Uh, said on their res, they they still use Indian, um, uh, you know, towards each other. Right. Um, but I think that goes along with, with kind of what you're saying. And then another uh, friend said, you know, it's crazy how the indigenous people of Japan look like the indigenous people of the Americas. Uh, Maybe they look like the Athabascans. The Athabascans are the ones from Alaska. Oh, okay. So they have a more rounded um, and a lighter skin tone and a more, um, a more um, olive eye up mm-hmm. there. Yeah. So they they would look more like them. Um, hmm. Yeah. So those are the Athabascans. And, and the Alaskan Natives, they don't call themselves Native Americans. They don't. They're Alaskan Natives. And um, if, for instance, I have I know this guy on TikTok. He means well, but because he's from Alaska, mm-hmm. things he says offend people. Because <laughs> he doesn't, he's never grown around people of color, really. Right. And so he doesn't mean to put his foot in his mouth, but he has. <laughs> and one time he said, well, I went down and I visited those Native Americans down there. And I saw how, you know, because he was talking about a, a reservation in poverty. Mm-hmm. And, oh, my gosh, he got dragged so bad by so many different angles of tiktok right you know all these people are like look he he says those native you know the native americans yeah. like he isn't one and like they made so many videos bashing him and i'm like but it's american indian alaska native yeah. we all know that it's because they have their own terminology that's why he said that it's you're the one that's uneducated right. and you're bashing him <laughs> right. and this poor guy like he's like i don't know what i'm supposed to say and i'm just like Oh, geez. <laughs> well, and, it, and it, it's a testament to, to what you were mentioning earlier. You know, a lot of people just want to pull back and, and just not engage because as well intentioned, um, they they don't want to, you know, they just want to have conversations and engage. And instead, it's they have to be defensive all the time and this and that. And that's sad because 
their contribution is of value, right? But people major on the minors and 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 miss out on on so much. Um, it is it is yeah and like for me people are like one girl commented and she's like you think you're so much better than me because you're northern native and and so like that and she's like and you're you you um have a card so what if i don't have a card and can't prove i'm indian and said that to me and i'm like i'm actually like against that i'm against Mm. having to prove blood quantum because it's extremely racist Mm. and i am all for um southern natives like being treated with respect and because for me growing up in la i was always everyone thinks i'm mexican Mm -hmm. right and i've always been coined as oh you're 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 probably aztec you're this you're that because of how short i am and my dark skin but my tribe is a tribe that's like from the like you know we're one of the ones along the border gotcha and so, of course, I'm going to look like this. Right. This is what everyone from my tribe looks like. <laughs> right. And so my tribe also used to be a part of Mexico because right. New Mexico was Mexico. <laughs> right. And so when people say, oh, you're a Mexican Indian, I'm like, well, yeah, New mm. Mexican, but yeah, kind of, you know, and it's like, it's weird. People want to use that to put me down. Yeah. And then people use that to put themselves down. Mm. And it's like, it's so sad because if, if we could just have everyone more educated, they would have so much pride in who they are. Right. And they wouldn't feel any need to, you know, get mad at a complete stranger on the internet. Right. To, to try you know? to build their pride off of demeaning somebody else instead of just, you know, uh, uh, as the kids say, right? Just do you, you know? <laughs> yeah, just do you, man. Like, you'll find your people. Like, if that's if that's the path you want to walk in life, you want to learn spiritual way, you want to learn the native way, you will find that way if that's what you truly want. Hmm. But if you want to be the face and the voice of all natives, you can't. Right. Nobody can. Nobody can be the face and voice of all natives. Right. Because there are 500 tribes in the United States, more than... And there's over a thousand in Mexico right? and then even more down south of that. So it's like one person can't speak for all of these different nations and cultures. Well, and it's, I think, um, uh, do you think there's a similarity there or, or, or kind of roots in the same thing when it comes to, for example, the quote unquote Hispanic community, right? Which, which is not a term that, that I like, but I also don't like Latino, the Hispanic vote, the Latino vote, and here's Latino issues, right? They just care about immigration. And it's like, what? There's such a diversity of views and such a diversity in, in experiences. And, you know, Puerto Ricans on the East Coast don't have a whole heck of a lot in common with Chicanos out here necessarily, right? right. And, and is that also what what exists with natives it, it kind of the erasure of of your particular individuality as 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 communities that's a good thing about the well so far right now the native representatives we have in congress are like very much so like into their tribes and their tribal nations specifically so they're out there really representing right now and um we we have this thing called tribal protocol um that all natives believe and it's a it's um it's a um an honor system of respect it's like unwritten rules of respect just like they have in any other culture, even mm-hmm. like they have in jail or prison or anywhere right. else, you know, mm-hmm. there's, there's unwritten rules. Right. And, and, and we have those in native societies, like the, you know, like for instance, when all this popped off with Candace Reed, the first people who should have been contacted were the Kauia okay. because that's their land. Mm. And so there was a lot of activists who are, are, um, you know, reconnecting and learning. And an older person told them that's not true. Cause I said that I was like, you're supposed to contact the Kwea. That's mm-hmm. not true. And then the Kwea came forward and they were like, actually, they really disrespected us by going and doing this and this and that. Mm. 
and not contacting or letting us know this was going to happen and be all over the news. Right. And so there's, there's like this thing of respect. And I know Aztec dancers, they practice it. They have mm-hmm. all these protocols, especially Aztecs. Like they're very serious about their protocols. Like if you're an Aztec dancer and you see another Aztec dance group, like you're out of state, you're traveling, you see them, you can't just walk in there and say, Hey, I'm going to dance with you guys. Right. It doesn't work like that, you know, because there's rules. And so there's a way to, to go about that. And, um, you know, we, we learn our positions and then we play those positions. Mm. So there's levels to this. Yeah. For sure. And, um, I don't know, I don't know if it's the new generation or if it's just technology, but people are starting to like really skip over that respect thing where you have to have respect for whose line you're on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of talk about, uh, about land recognition right it, i've heard different perspectives from from different natives in terms of some see it as performative right like okay you made this statement but it's, it's kind of hollow words while as others find it to be important um what what are your thoughts on that you um, share in certain instances, it can be totally performative, you know, yeah. like Riverside, they're like, okay, now we're going to start doing a land acknowledgement. It's like, well, you guys could have been doing that before, mm-hmm. you know, like, like it's not that hard. It's literally just a few sentences. It's not hard. And they said in October, oh, we're going to figure out a land acknowledgement. And guess what? They're still working on it. And it's just a few sentences. Right. So, yeah, there is the difference between doing it because you want to do it because you actually care and doing it because it's it's going to smooth things over or make you look better. Right. And certain cities like all on their own, they do it without even being asked by the native population. They just do it. Hmm. And that's that's what what it's about, you know, is is recognizing and um, truth, truth and reconciliation. Yeah. They yeah, have that South in Africa. Canada. Yeah. Oh, they have it in Canada too, huh? I was thinking. Of- yeah, it's a big thing. Truth mm. and reconciliation. We don't really have that here with natives. In Canada, mm. they have it with natives, but mm. not here. Mm. We don't have any reconciliation. Yeah. No. And but but it has to be taken upon the initiative of the non-native to do it, or us being up their butt telling them to do it. Right. And if we do that, then we know it's purely performative. Right. That's the difference is if you had to light light a fire under someone or not to know if they're doing it for, you know, it could be a politician doing it for the votes. Right. For instance, I know a politician here who signed on to legislation when they don't do anything to help natives and they're, you know, have actually harmed the native community. Mm. And it's frustrating because now they're signed on to a bill that, you know, is supposed to help native people. And it's like, this is purely performative. But if I say anything publicly, then I'm the bad guy. Right, because now you're you're talking bad about an ally, right? Yeah, so <laughs> I have to just keep it quiet, and I'll be like, okay, well, I'll just forget about all these people that you messed up. No worries. Right. But it is what it is. Yeah. So last question. Uh, what are the three things, and this is a very open question, three or four things, who's counting, um, that you're most proud of, you as an individual are most proud of? Mm, well, first, I would say my daughter. I'm definitely most proud of my child. Um, she's like definitely like the the all the best parts of me, I think. And and um, you know, she's kind of giving me a second chance to to like almost like see myself being raised in a better situation. So mm. that's definitely one thing that's good for me or positive. And then another thing would be, um, after I left foster care, I decided that I wanted to give back to foster youth by doing uh, motivational speaking. And I specifically chose that because it was a girl, you know, that came to me when I was in high school that did that, that really changed the trajectory of my life and what I wanted to do. Wow. Um, seeing her kind of like succeed in the real world and like, like it's going to be okay. Just knowing that it was going to be okay. It really like helped me 
when I was turning 18 and I was scared. Hmm. So that's something I'm really proud of because, you know, I, maybe I impact people, maybe I don't, but at least like, I know I tried. Yeah. Oh, and uh, last thing that I'm most proud of, um, probably would be, oh, um, getting to um, live my culture mm. when my ancestors couldn't. Wow. I have the opportunity to now learn my language. I have the opportunity to do the dances and sing the songs, and my ancestors weren't allowed. Mm. For hundreds of years right. and now i can so that's what i'm proud of yeah no that's powerful um and, it got and everyone you. should yeah. everyone should i'm like if you're southern native and, and you're not sure how to connect the best thing to do find out where your parents were from in mexico or if they weren't from mexico find out where your grandparents were from mexico and if you can find out where your great grandparents were <laughs> most likely that's where your ancestors might be from yeah. And then all you have to do is find out what tribes in that area mm. and go take a visit. <laughs> yeah. Or, or just learn about their history and their culture, you know? Yeah. Because tribes, like we, we usually stayed pretty, you know, we didn't move a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you go back three generations, that's most likely where your ancestors came from. That's a good, uh, that's a good point. Um, and I encourage all Mexican people that or like, you know, that are learning about their indigenous roots, even if they're from, say, El Salvador mm -hmm. or Peru or wherever, you know, just find out who you, who your great your grandparents were, your great grandparents, where they lived and then just learn about that culture in that area, because that's the culture that they lived in. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. No, I. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think that's a great. Uh, that's a great note to leave it. And you know, I got a, a subscriber that's real supportive of the channel, and uh, and she saw your uh, she saw the video in Ireland, right? Or in Germany? I'm sorry, she's in Germany. She's she's oh, from, wow. she's from Ireland, um, and she identifies as an indigenous person. And and I'm probably gonna butcher some of these pronunciations, but South Sammy Laplander born on tundra in norway there we go oh wow um, yeah and, the sami people there they're, they're the go. indigenous people from over there yeah that's what she said she said the the laplander slash sami are are europe's only indigenous people um uh, they look like alaskans too hmm that's interesting i uh i could talk to you about a bunch of stuff um <laughs> but you know and and so maybe there'll be some topics like foster care or something in the future sure you know to to kind of have you on and 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 share some of your thoughts on that um but thank you very much thank you for all that you sacrificed and endured to draw attention to this candace reese scenario i i know the journey was ridiculous in in a host of different ways um and and so thank you for that, you know, and, and thank yeah. you for for your family. Uh, you didn't have right to do on. it, you know, you didn't have to do it. And um, but I'd like to believe that that some people are better off because you did. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So so thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me on and being persistent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was, I was like. You know, finally, when I was ready to talk, everybody's like, oh, no, that story is last year. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, you know, so I'm grateful that, you know, for everyone that's listening to. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it worked out. Um, so so thank you. We uh, let's connect again soon. OK. All right. Well, blessings Sounds to you good. and yours. I appreciate you. You too. Mm, take care. All right. Bye bye. This is the homie hangout man. Help others move with excellence. Help yourself at the same time.